Every book, every volume you see has a soul. The soul of the person who wrote it and the soul of those who read it and lived it and dreamed with it. Every time a book changes hands, every time someone runs his eyes down its pages, its spirit grows and strengthens. Carlos Ruiz Zafon. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. Our question of today is, how do I help authors I support? This is something we wanted to bring up, and we just finished with Christmas, and a lot of people have been given books from family members that are authors. As part of the season, humanity tends to focus on helping each other, supporting each other, lifting each other up. And that's something that can be really, really important for self-published authors, for new authors, is to get people around them supporting them and helping them. Our question number one for this is, I have a friend who's an author. I want to help, but I don't have any money. What do I do? The single biggest thing anybody can do is leave a review. And this is most often done on Amazon. An author is not allowed to ask for reviews. You as a product seller on Amazon are breaking the rules of Amazon by asking for a review. Some people I've seen online will actually say, hey, I'll review your book if you pay me money. That's especially illegal. But so that all of your author friends out there don't have to say it, I'm going to say it. Leave a review. Yes. Just like any other product you see out there, if you're seeing one vacuum compared to the other, which one do you go for? The one with a single five-star review or the one with 15 five-star reviews, 10 four-star reviews. I'll go with the one that has more reviews because it tells me more people have used it, more people have gone through it, and more people have opinions about it. Amazon actually has a bestsellers list, and that crosses any books that they sell, traditional or self-published, doesn't matter. But you need to not sell a certain number of books but you need to have a certain number of reviews before being considered for these bestseller lists. Another main thing that you can do is just share your copy of the book. If you were given the copy as a present, share it with other people. Let people borrow it and read it so that they can recommend it or decide that they want to buy it. Talk about it with people. Word of mouth goes a very long way. And I like to think of it as a way to share a part of my soul with somebody else. I have coerced you into reading a lot of Ted Decker books because his style is very important to me. And this is a way of sharing a part of my writing journey with you. Even though Ted Decker is not aware of this conversation at all, I am still helping him gain new readers by sharing my love for Ted Decker with you. Another thing that you can do to help out an author that you know especially if you live in a different town than them, request the book at your local library or at your local bookstore. Tell them that you want to see it on the shelf. And then a lot of the time, they'll make the effort to get it there. And if they've never heard of this author that you support, now they have. If one person requests it, it's assumed that a lot of people are thinking it. So let's go ahead and move on to our next question. How do I get people to read what I love? This has two answers, depending on if the person is a reader or not. I would say if they're not, a good option is to maybe get them the audible version or some kind of audiobook version, because then they can listen to it in the car and they can still experience the journey even if they're not a reader by nature. But even before that, just talk about it. Talking about authors that you like to read gets other people thinking. I can't tell you how many people I have gotten to read Brandon Sanderson because I keep talking about Brandon Sanderson. And you actually have no idea because of the people who are listening to this podcast who might not know who Brandon Sanderson is, now is very familiar with his writing and especially the the Stormlight Archive series. Just read Brandon Sanderson. I suggest starting with the Mistborn series. (laughs) But that's how you do it. That's how you talk about it. You share how much you love it because people tend to be inspired by other people's joy and love for something. Yeah, there is no substitute for enthusiasm across the board. 
And if they have any questions or hesitations about it, because buying books can be expensive, just lend them your copy. I know that can be a little bit hard to do separating yourself from a book that you like or love, but trust me, it's worth it in the end to get other people to read it. Honestly, what's the worst that can happen? They keep it, you buy another copy, and you've supported this author even more, and now they have a version of it on their shelf, and when they do eventually read it, they will go and purchase other books by the same author. So if you help somebody you know take that first step down that journey, they will go and get all of those books also and read all of those books. Almost every reader I know does that. Let's move on to the next question. How do I get non-readers to read what I enjoy? I will hesitate in labeling anybody a non-reader. I read my emails. I read Facebook. I read memes by this one friend of mine all the time. I read a lot. Even if I'm not reading a book, I'm still reading. So if you find someone and they say they don't read, sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right book. A lot of the people that I know that say they don't like reading is because the only books they've ever consumed were the books they were forced to read in school, which 90% of the time are stuffy books that are terrible, terrible books. (laughs) I personally am an avid reader, but I never finished a book that I was forced to read in high school. I always spark notes it because I hated it so much. <laughs> and I think a lot of the public that doesn't read books on a regular basis, that's how they see reading is work. It's homework. It's something you have to log. It's something you have to comprehend. It's not entertainment. And if your book is educational, then it might fall into that category, in which case you have a very specific audience who should be coming to you for that information. But if your book is entertainment and meant for pretty much anybody, then breaking that stigma is a very difficult thing. But if you can get them to read or comprehend or ingest in some way one book and recognize, hey, this is like a movie except all the graphics are perfect because they're in my head, once they get through that barrier, It's a whole new world. My sister struggled with this a lot. She never really enjoyed reading. But lately, she's found some books that she really likes that she actually introduced me to these books. And her recommendation means a lot more to me than a lot of other people's recommendations because I know she doesn't read a lot. So if she's read it, it has to be good. And that's the thing is find what they like, find what they enjoy And then try to introduce them to something in that genre, in that area. And really, audiobooks. People find themselves in areas where they just don't have time to sit and read, but they have time to listen. You can listen to an audiobook while you're cleaning the house, while you're driving your car. That opens so many doors for people that say they don't read. So to sum up this idea of how to help authors that you support, talk about it, share it, Word of mouth, like I said, goes a long way. So if you can't spend a dime, let people know about it. Let people know as you're reading the book. It's like my sister is very familiar with what happens in the Jack Reacher series just because she, she'll she call me in. It's like, oh, it's dinner time. I'll go, wait, Jack Reacher's about to kill somebody. He's about to get the Chinese into a fight with the Saudis. So I'll be right there. She has no clue. None whatsoever. But if any of this were remotely interesting to her, she'd hear that. Or James, her husband, he might hear that and go, hey, that's interesting. Maybe that's something I want to read. This is our last episode of this month. So we want to wrap it up. We've been trying to answer your questions, questions that we see a lot in the world of new authors. So we have a few questions for you. We want to learn more about you, what your interests are, where you're going so that we can tune our podcast to fit you, our listeners. First of all, thank you. Thank you so much for listening. It's a huge help. If you want to support us, do the same thing that we suggested you do for authors. Review, share, help us get our name out there. We love you guys so much for listening. Absolutely. So some of our questions that we want to ask you is, what do you write? Because a lot of what each of us write and a lot of what each of us edit is fiction. 
And if most of our listeners are out there, we're like, okay, we're well, talking about magic again. I write nonfiction. This is really not applicable to what I write. We want to know. We want to know what's interesting to you. We want to know which episodes that you listen to again. We want to know what information you are thirsting for. And knowing what you write is super helpful. That kind of goes along with what segments do you particularly enjoy? Which ones do you want more of? Do you want us to talk more about the nitty gritty about writing and editing? Or do you want us to talk more about world building and the theoretical ideas around writing? One of the more popular workshops we gave during the writing retreat was the story structure one. Hearing that, it's like, okay, this is something of interest, story structure. So should we do something on the hero's journey? We probably will at some point anyway, but if you're interested in it, let us know. We can do it sooner. So our final question for you is, would you be interested in mentorships and workshops? Aspen House holds a writer's retreat in the summer. Would you like us to do smaller workshops if you're in the Reading area or that we could do online to help you to work directly with you? If that's something you're interested in, email us. Yeah, we would be happy to Skype you and get your whole writing club together and we can talk about this and that story. You could send us something ahead of time. We can sit down and join your writing club for a session. That that would be a lot of fun. And we can talk about different elements of story structure or whatever it is that you're focusing on that month for your writing club. We would love to be a part of that. So if you're interested in learning from us in a different capacity besides this educational podcast, let us know. We also joke all the time about maybe writing nonfiction. Mine would probably be a writer's guide to killing people. Mine would probably have to do something about world building and or magic building. <laughs> so thank you again so much for listening, for your support. We hope you stick around. We hope that we can take you into the new year with a lot more information and a lot more tips and advice on how to improve your writing. And until then, just remember what we always tell you. Write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 